where the mountains rise against the clouds and the sea breaks hard against the stone, lies a land whose people carry one of the most unusual genetic signatures in the world. The DNA of Scotland is not simple, not uniform, but a layered record of migrations, conquests, and isolation stretching back to the Ice Age. To understand why Scottish DNA is considered strange, unique, and different than that of its neighbors, we must go back to the beginning, when ice still covered much of the land. Around 12,000 years ago, as the glaciers retreated at the end of the last ice age, the first groups of hunter-gatherers entered the land that would later be called Scotland. They came from the south and west, people tied by blood to populations in Iberia, today's Spain and Portugal. Their genetic markers still appear in modern Scots, especially in remote communities, showing a surprising continuity with Europe's ancient post-glacial settlers. Archaeology supports this, as tools and remains from the Mesolithic period in Scotland match those of other Western European hunter-gatherer groups. These earliest Scots were few, but their legacy has lasted in the genetic fabric of the people who came after them. By around 6,000 years ago, during the Neolithic period, farming spread into Britain. New people arrived carrying different genetic signatures, tied to populations from Anatolia and the eastern Mediterranean who had spread farming practices across Europe. They mixed with the hunter-gatherers, altering the genetic picture of the islands. Yet studies show that in Scotland, especially in the highlands and islands, the older hunter-gatherer ancestry persisted in higher amounts than in southern Britain. This early layering helps explain part of the distinctiveness of Scottish DNA even today. When Bronze Age migrations followed around 4,000 years ago, another genetic component entered Britain, associated with people from the Eurasian steppe. This population carried what is known as Yamnaya, or steppe ancestry, and their arrival reshaped much of the genetic profile of northern and western Europe. In England, these newcomers largely replaced earlier male lineages, but in Scotland, the replacement was less complete. Ancient DNA taken from remains in Scotland shows continuity with earlier Neolithic groups, again suggesting that Scotland retained older genetic layers compared to England. Moving into the Iron Age, the tribes of Northern Britain developed cultures that would later be recorded in fragmentary history. Among them were the Picts, a people noted by Roman writers for their painted or tattooed bodies and their resistance to outside control. The Romans never fully conquered Scotland. They built Hadrian's Wall and later the Antonine Wall, but they could not permanently subdue the tribes beyond. The Picts left behind mysterious carved stones and a reputation for being elusive, but genetics suggests that their legacy endures. Modern DNA from northern Scotland shows unique clustering that traces back to populations present before the Viking Age and before the Gaelic migrations from Ireland. This indicates that Pictish ancestry survived, hidden within later populations, rather than vanishing as once believed. At the same time, another stream of ancestry entered Scotland. From Ireland came Gaelic-speaking peoples, who carried their own genetic signatures. They brought language and culture that merged with and eventually overtook Pictish traditions in many areas. The Kingdom of Dal Riata, straddling parts of western Scotland and northeastern Ireland, facilitated this exchange. As these gales spread, they fused with the local populations, creating the ancestors of many highland clans. Genetic studies show close links between Western Scotland and Northeastern Ireland, confirming this movement. Yet again, the pattern was not simple replacement. Instead, old and new lineages combined, giving Scotland even more genetic diversity. The Viking Age brought another dramatic change. From the late 8th century onwards, Norse seafarers arrived on Scottish shores. They did not only raid, but settled, particularly in the northern isles of Orkney and Shetland, as well as the Hebrides. 
their genetic impact remains striking today. Modern inhabitants of Orkney carry up to one-third Norse ancestry, one of the strongest Viking signatures outside of Scandinavia itself. In Shetland, the percentages are also high. Genetic studies of Viking-era burials in these regions reveal both Norse and local ancestry, showing that Norse settlers intermarried with existing populations. In mainland Scotland, Norse ancestry is weaker but still present, especially in coastal areas. This Viking influence adds another layer, making Scottish DNA stand out compared to Ireland and England, which experienced Viking settlement differently. The story does not end there. Scotland's lowlands, closer to England, became more open to influences from Anglo-Saxon migrations, Norman settlers, and later movement from continental Europe. Genetic data shows that lowlanders share more in common with northern English populations than highlanders do. In contrast, the highlands remained more isolated, allowing older lineages to persist. This highland-lowland divide is one of the most interesting features of Scottish genetics. People in remote highland and island communities often show continuity with very old genetic clusters, while lowlanders carry more mixed and cosmopolitan DNA. This explains why, within a small country, the genetic landscape can shift so dramatically over short distances. Clan culture reinforced this. For centuries, highland clans lived in relative isolation, marrying within their kin groups or neighboring clans. This preserved certain lineages and genetic markers that can still be detected today. Surnames often correspond to particular Y chromosome lineages, and genetic genealogy projects have traced modern bearers of names like MacDonald, Campbell, or MacLeod back to medieval ancestors. This does not mean all clan members were biologically related, but enough were to leave detectable patterns in the DNA of their descendants. By contrast, lowland towns and cities, with greater trade and movement, absorbed more outside influences. From Flemish weavers to Norman knights, from English settlers to later European migrants, the lowlands reflect centuries of mixing. Yet even here, Scottish genetic identity remained distinct. Studies such as the People of the British Isles project reveal Scottish samples form unique clusters, separate from English and Welsh ones, with clear internal variation between highland, lowland, and island groups. The strangeness of Scottish DNA also lies in how it differs from what people might expect. England, long subject to Roman, Anglo-Saxon, and Norman conquests, shows heavy layers of continental European ancestry. Scotland, though invaded and influenced, resisted full-scale replacement. Instead, it preserved older ancestries alongside the new. Modern Scots often carry a stronger signal of ancient Iberian hunter-gatherers, Neolithic farmers, and early Celts than do the English. They also show more distinct Viking input in the north and west. This combination, ancient persistence plus selective admixture, makes the genetic story of Scotland different from its neighbors. Scientific studies reinforce this. Work from the University of Edinburgh on Orkney and Shetland populations shows the persistence of Norse ancestry, along with genetic isolation effects that increase the frequency of rare variants. The people of the British Isles project, using fine-scale clustering, identified multiple distinct genetic groups within Scotland, including unique signatures for the Hebrides, Orkney, and the Northeast Highlands. These groups correspond not only to geography, but to historical divisions of culture and language. For example, areas that were historically Gaelic-speaking show different genetic patterns from those that were Norse-influenced or Anglicized. Another unusual feature is that Scottish DNA often shows less Anglo-Saxon ancestry than English DNA, even in the lowlands. This suggests that while Anglo-Saxon culture and language spread, the genetic impact in Scotland was weaker.
This further strengthens the impression that Scottish genetic heritage is older and more conserved. When the British Empire expanded, Scots traveled widely. They settled in North America, Australia, New Zealand, Africa, and Asia. They carried their DNA abroad, spreading Scottish genetic markers across the globe. Yet at home, particularly in rural and island communities, ancient patterns survived. This paradox, Scots as both preservers of the past and spreaders of their genes worldwide, adds to the distinctiveness of their DNA story. Today, the study of Scottish DNA has practical as well as historical value. Projects such as Viking Genes and Orchides examine genetic variation in the Northern Isles to better understand health and disease. Because isolated communities preserved old lineages, certain genetic conditions are more common, providing insight into human biology. At the same time, these studies shed light on ancestry confirming that Scottish DNA remains a tapestry woven from deep time. To summarize this story in factual terms, the genetic strangeness of Scotland comes from its unusual mix of continuity and diversity. The earliest post-Ice Age settlers left strong traces that persist to this day. Neolithic farmers and Bronze Age migrants added layers without erasing the old. The Picts contributed unique ancestry that still exists in the North. Gaelic migrations from Ireland intertwined with these older lines. Norse Vikings brought one of the strongest genetic signatures outside Scandinavia, especially in the Isles. Lowlands absorbed some Anglo-Saxon and Norman input, but less than in England. Highlands preserved older patterns due to isolation. The result is that modern Scots are genetically distinct, carrying markers that link them to some of Europe's oldest peoples, while also showing signs of admixture from Vikings and Celts. This combination sets them apart from their neighbors and explains why scientists describe Scottish DNA as unusual. Thus, from Ice Age hunters to modern genetic projects, the tale is consistent. Scotland's DNA is strange, not because it is mysterious in a mythical sense, but because it preserves with unusual clarity the deep layers of Europe's human history. It is a living archive of migration, resistance, and survival, carried not in books or ruins, but in the cells of its people. In every highland glen and island harbor, in every lowland town and northern village, the blood of Scotland whispers of Iberian hunters, Neolithic farmers, Bronze Age migrants, Pictish warriors, Gaelic settlers, Norse raiders, and lowland traders. Each left their mark, but none erased the others. Together, they made Scottish DNA one of the strangest and most revealing genetic legacies in the world.